This is Glambition Radio, episode number 211, with Devin Combs of Unbridled Retreats. Welcome to Glambition Radio. I am your host, Allie Brown. I'm an entrepreneur, mentor, investor, and mom of twins. I love thinking big, doing different, and exploring ideas that disrupt the status quo, especially when it comes to women, because we are rewriting the rules for leadership, business success, making money, and changing the world. And we're doing it with style. Let's go. For today's guest on Glambition Radio, healing and purpose was actually hiding in plain sight for her her entire life. She grew up in the horse world as a competitive rider and enthusiast, and she always felt a close connection and appreciation for horses. But it wasn't until she attended a 60-day addiction treatment program that she first experienced equine therapy and her professional calling, as Devin Combs would soon realize. Today, she is named the Equestrian of the Wellness World by Canyon Ranch in Arizona. That's a pretty big deal. And her unbridled retreats are designed for women to get profound breakthroughs. And she'll talk about today how this works. I'm just so thrilled to see how far her business has come. I got to know Devin about a little over a year ago, and she was just mapping out the next level of her business. And man, now she's in the Four Seasons in Hawaii. She's in all these high-end resorts all over the country. She's been featured in Good Morning America, Cowgirl Magazine. Didn't know about that one, but maybe I'll subscribe. And you get the idea. But I think you're going to really find her story fascinating today and really that definitive moment when she knew she had found her calling, but she had to make some sacrifices to make it happen. I think we don't hear about that enough. Really making those trades in your life, making those decisions where you know that, you know what, this may be uncomfortable for a while, but this is going to get me where I need to go. Quick shout out to two reviews my team pulled for me from iTunes today. The first is, this podcast always inspires me. Five stars by Kat from the UK. I love this podcast. I've been listening to it from the very first episode. Thank you. Allie has amazing guests who never fail to inspire. She has a relaxed interview style, but keeps it on track and delivers podcast episodes that are succinct, illuminated, and incisive. I'm going to hire you, Kat, to write my copy. That was like really good. If you want to read the rest of Kat's review, go to iTunes and check it out. The next one is Not For Everyone by Catherine Can. If you're not ready to change, this is not for you. It's nothing but smart businesswomen who are taking chances and making a difference. These ladies share their stories and this will fire you up if you're willing to step outside your comfort zone. Thank you so much for taking the time to leave us a review. And I'm really excited on our next episode, we're going to announce full details for our June Glambition Radio Journal giveaway. Even if you leave a review now, we will qualify you to get one of these gorgeous journals, but it is going to be first come first serve. So I will be announcing that on the next show and how you can get a journal sent to you. So take a few minutes now, if you have time and make that review, so you don't have to do it later, please, if you can, it really helps us with the rankings. There are so many women that when they discover this show, they're like, I didn't even know about this. So thanks so much. We'll only take you a minute and you could do it right from your phone. And a reminder, this show is sponsored by The Trust. It's the new private premier network for seven and eight figure women entrepreneurs. If you or another female leader you know is craving something different, more powerful connections, more elevated conversation, and a modern platform for connecting with other truly high-performing women globally, visit jointhetrust.org for more details and to request a brief informational interview if you qualify. And if you don't, ladies, please send the women in your life who you know would love this. Please send them our way. We really appreciate it. Now, enjoy a fantastic conversation with Devin Combs. Devin, where are you right now? I am in Littleton, Colorado, sitting, looking out a beautiful window at my horses outside in the back. When when we worked together last year, I forget, were you moving or building something or what what were you doing? 
I had recently moved into my very own horse property and I call it the ranchette. So <laughs> it's a small horse property. I'm about 25 minutes south of Denver. So still close to civilization, but yeah, I have a bit of land. So it's, it's been wonderful. Oh, it just sounds heavenly and not bad to shelter in place in either. Not at all. I can't complain on that front. Yeah. No, I'm surrounded by nature and horses and yeah, that, that part has been nice. You still get to do what you love every day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was fascinating to get to know you because I've, you know, I've heard of this world of, you know, the people who talk to horses and you do these horse retreats and things. And I've never talked to someone who, you know, not only understands it, but, but does this for a living. I think it'd be great for you to start with the story and how this all happened. Absolutely, Ali. So, and I don't call myself a horse whisperer by any means, but I am a horse listener. So I have really honed my skills to listen to what horses are communicating. And this started way back when I was young. I was very blessed to grow up with horses. Both my parents are horse people. So I did have a pony when I was a little girl and grew up horseback riding and got into showing and competing in three-day eventing. And I had a trainer, I did pony club, but it was a lot of a one-way communication with horses, a one-way relationship where it was very much about ego. A lot of the horse world that I was in was about winning the blue ribbon, Mm -hmm. you know, telling your horse what to do. And there were some things I saw in the horse world. It didn't resonate with me. And I was a teenager. I remember watching trainers do some pretty hard things to get horses to go over jumps and kicking them and whipping them. And it never, that never felt right to me, that part of the horse world. But as a teenager, I wasn't able to articulate it at the time. I just knew it was after the shows, you know, when I was hanging out in the barn with my horse, not really doing much, maybe just brushing them, grooming them. But that was when I felt most at peace and really felt I could be myself. Hmm. And I remember that feeling of being with horses. It wasn't about doing. It was really about being. Hmm. That was really a a highlight for me during those times. Um, I ended up going to college and I was struggling with perfectionism and some control issues through a lot of my growing up years. And it just was out of control when I went to college. And um, I developed bulimia and ended up dropping out of three different schools. Really, I was I was a mess and tried riding horses again. That really wasn't the answer. Allie and I ended up at a treatment center in Tucson, Arizona. And the treatment center had equine therapy. And I'd never heard of equine therapy at the time. I was 21 years old. I knew that I loved horses, but I had no idea, you know, therapy with horses. I didn't know what that meant. But I was really excited to experience that and be with horses again. So how I really got into experiencing the healing power of horses happened at this treatment center where I was a patient. And I'll never forget we went to the equine therapy stables. There was 10 women. People were there with me that were bulimic, anorexic, compulsive overeaters, compulsive over exercisers. They threw us all together. And we went to the stables and I looked around and there were no saddles and no bridles. There was just a round pen with a horse loose in it. I thought that's weird. We're obviously not going to be riding. And the equine therapist, Marla, asked our group who'd like to experience the equine therapy first. So my hand shot up and she said, all right, great. I want you to walk in this pen and go connect with Jack, the horse. So I was excited. This was one thing in my life I knew I was confident in was being with horses. Mm -hmm. And I walked in the pen, walked right over to Jack, just doing my horsewoman thing. And Jack turned his butt to me. And walk as far away as he could get. Literally went to the furthest corner of this space. And I stood there feeling totally rejected, like a failure, really feeling like, God, I can't even do this right. You know, and I had a bunch of people watching me. That didn't help. And Marla said from the outside of the pen, she said, Devin, I want you to stop. Stop trying so hard. Get out of your head. And she had me close my eyes and ground my feet. 
and really breathe and connect to the earth. And the moment I started doing that, Allie, it was like a wave of emotion came up. And it was all the tears and fears I'd really suppressed for the last 21 years of my life. And I could not hold back my emotions. Hmm. Looked like a wall came down and I started sobbing in the middle of this arena. And the horse, Jack, turned his head the moment I started to get emotional, walked right up to me, put his head, his big, beautiful head, right into my heart, put his nose right into my heart and stood with me. And I was wailing. And this horse stood with me in my pain. And I'll never forget that moment. It changed my belief about myself. I'd always thought if people saw who I truly was, uh, kind of my more messy, imperfect, didn't have my stuff together, that kind of vulnerable side, that they would run away, that mm-hmm. I, I would be rejected. And that horse, Jack, proved just the opposite. That when I was being authentic and just showing how I was feeling, that's when he wanted to connect. And horses don't lie. And that horse really proved to me that I was okay. And I was good enough just as I was. And it was time that I expressed all of who I was. Hmm. And it changed my life. And I saw how the horses interacted with the different women throughout the rest of that day. People that had no horse experience. And each woman got her own kind of aha or takeaway through different horses interacting with them. And the light bulb went off, Allie. Holy, holy moly, this is what I meant to do. This is why I've been with horses my whole life. It just took me to go through my own struggle to really understand the healing power of horses. So you knew it then? Like you, and you were personally healing, but then from a career or kind of life purpose point of view, you said, this is it. The light bulb went off. I wanted Marla's job. (laughs) I thought this woman is making a living helping people access their emotions through horses. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Wow. Wow. So what did you do next? So I went home after 60 days at the treatment center and um, was in a way better place. Ended up working with a life coach and um, I actually ended up getting my real estate license. So my dad has been in real estate 40 years now and, um, I didn't have a college degree. I never finished. So I thought, what the heck? I'll join the family real estate business until I can figure out how to create a career with horses. So got my license selling houses. And then my life coach at the time had heard of a woman in Boulder, Colorado, who created a program called Equine Gestalt Coaching Method. And it was in my, I mean, I was living in Denver at the time. Boulder was my backyard almost. So I jumped on this woman's introductory call about this program she was offering, a two-year certification on how to train people to become a coach, to conduct healing and coaching sessions with horses. I jumped on that call and signed up right away and really started out in that program just gung-ho. I feel like I finally found the education I was just so hungry for took that on while still working real estate. So Mm -hmm. did both for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And yeah, real estate, I'll tell you it, I did not like it. (laughs) I was not born to sell real estate. It feels very linear to me that for you, Yeah, you're so, you're so rich in layers of a person and it seems just like a very linear face value job. It was, it was. And I knew I could make a very solid income doing that. I knew my my dad had created an amazing career, but I remember sitting in the sales meetings, looking around at the other realtors that had been doing it 20, 30, 40 years, and I knew in my gut, I did not want to be talking about the appreciation value of slab granite countertops 30 years from now. Mm-hmm. There, there was just no passion, but real estate was a great bridge job and bridge career while I built my business with horses. I think a lot of women dismiss that as, you know, we all think that we're supposed to just go for the dream and, and that's true, but there's a lot of times where you can straddle both for a while, not forever, but absolutely when it's part of your plan, then it's, it, it feels better. Absolutely. Yeah. And I believe every career we do, every job we're in, we gain some tools that are going to help us later. Some Mm -hmm. tools, some skills. 
And for me, real estate taught me about sales, marketing, negotiation, flexibility, so much. And yeah, I straddled both those worlds. I literally had a boot in one arena and my high heeled shoes showing houses on the other side for three and a half years until I was fully able to leave real estate, have my last closing. I did tell the managing broker, I did not want to maintain my real estate license because I knew it'd be too easy to go back. So I let the license go burn the bridge. And I was off to the races. I could finally support myself doing my horse career. But it took me after I graduated my two-year certification program. After that, it even took me three and a half years to build it enough where I could leave real estate completely. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got your start really, you know, it was at Canyon Ranch. Is that where you first got started really with this as the official career? Yes. In terms of the women's retreats, Canyon Ranch was a a big fish to land. And I had been doing a lot of private sessions with people, uh, mostly working with women um, in some kind of midlife transition. They would want to come work with the horses as opposed to a talk therapy session. They would want to come out and be in nature and have more of an experiential coaching session, which is what I do. But then, yeah, I started to get this desire to do retreats. Mm. I'd been on retreats personally. I thought they were so powerful, bringing strangers together, to really experience transformation. And that's where the idea, yeah, launched. And Canyon Ranch is one of the top wellness facilities almost in the world. They're really a pioneer. And they have every modality, except they did not have an equine retreat program. So yes, I had contracted with a a company called Retreats Unlimited. I kind of had them as a broker for Mm me, reaching out to different high-end resorts, and they had a connection with Canyon Ranch. So they connected me. I flew out for an interview. I was so nervous. I'll tell you, I was the only one at Canyon Ranch wearing cowgirl boots. (laughs) <laughs> Everybody else, there's a lot of yoga pants and more relaxed gym clothing. And I had my cowboy boots on. But yeah, they agreed for us to have a partnership. And I've done, gosh, five retreats there over the last few years. Um, so that was a great, great place to start doing the retreats. Yeah. And so have you always, you know, as you built the business and from, I think that moment you first realized that this was going to be your path, these groups have always been women. Is that true? It's true, Allie. Yeah. And Canyon Why? Ranch, you know, Canyon Ranch, they had it open to men. They did. And we've had a couple guys sign up and then drop out. When they heard there was nobody, no other men coming. For women, there is such a need for sisterhood. I see that a lot. And a place and space where women can come together, drop their mask, drop their guard, don't have to play a role, and can be real with each other and really get to know one another beyond small talk. And it's a, it's a special thing at a retreat when people come together and women who don't know each other, Mm. because there's a confidentiality there, you know, they're not, they don't know each other's husbands or kids or lives. And that really helps women open up very quickly and be vulnerable on a level that they may not even with their best friends back home, because there's so much shared history with people that they know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's this deep yearning for sisterhood and uh, authentic connection. Yeah. And what, what do women gain from the retreats that you run and, and are they, is this different from some of the things you've done in the past, the unbridled retreats? So they're all the unbridled retreats is what I've trademarked them as thanks to you in our VIP session. You gave me so many great branding tips. Canyon Ranch does call it the healing power of horses, but it's the same, same layout, Mm. same setup. And the big thing they're coming for is clarity, to find clarity, to hit a reset button. A lot of women coming in have been going 90 miles an hour, sometimes for the past five, 10, 20 years. They've forgotten who they are. Mm. They want to reconnect with their intuition, what they're really passionate about, And the woman they were before they started to play a role. And very often that role is caretaker for others. 
maybe in their professional career, they've taken on a role leader or CEO, just very much associated and identified with a role that now they're stuck in. And they're really craving to reconnect to different parts of themselves that may have not had space and place to be present for a long, long time. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what type of women come to your retreats? The type of women that come, I'll start with age. Usually they're between 40 to 65. The youngest I've ever had at a retreat was 25. She just got out of college, very lost, had no idea what she wanted to do. The oldest woman I've ever had at a retreat was 78. And she was a badass. She rode a horse for the first time ever, 78 years old on our retreat. That's great. Yeah. They're women who they're looking for something more. They've got some kind of yearning. They may not even know exactly what it is, but they're dissatisfied and they're looking for more and for fulfillment. And they're women who are successful from the outside. I mean, you'd look at them and you'd think they had it all, but kind of behind closed doors, that's not the case. And it's fascinating, Allie. I used to think, oh, you know, just make a quick judgment about somebody. Oh, that that person, that woman, she's got the marriage, the kids, the house, the career. She has it all. But then she'll show up at a retreat and really let that mask down. And often there's a lot of pain there or sadness or a grief that many women, myself included, I, I covered up a lot of my emotions for years. So they present in one way, but they come to the retreat, can let their hair down. And that's usually a very common thing. You see a whole different side, a more vulnerable side. Yeah. I'd imagine too, that this could attract a lot of women who, you know, aren't a good fit or just don't want to do traditional type therapy where you go sit with a therapist every week and talk through everything. This is a lot different, right? It is different than talk therapy. Yes. And I've done talk therapy. There is a lot of value to it, but this takes it beyond an intellectual understanding because it's an experiential retreat and you're working with a 1200 pound animal. <laughs> so yeah, most people that come aren't afraid you know, to get a little messy to wear their play clothes and be outside to loosen up a little bit. They're mm -hmm. usually open to adventure, being around a herd of horses. That's that's an adventure. It's different than sitting in an office under fluorescent lighting. They're usually connected to nature, want to be outside. So yeah, it does also get people out of their comfort zones. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We get them out of the chair, out of talking about their problems and issues and really moving the energy when they're connecting with a the horse. They're not just talking about how they're feeling. They're feeling how they're feeling. And really to heal, you got to be able to feel. And uh, with horses, they don't judge and they're very honest. They're going to give you really direct feedback in a loving way, no matter how you're feeling. Now, I'd like to ask a few questions about the business side of this and how you've developed this, because I, there's a lot of women listening probably who can relate right now to seeing what they want to do, learning more about it, and maybe even doing it for someone else or with someone else, and then thinking, you know what, I think I, I, think I could go do this thing on my own, maybe in a different way and call it my thing and, and, and make it different than the other thing. And in not so eloquent terms, what I'm trying to describe, what you did, you know what I mean? So this, this happens a lot and I will have clients come in sometimes who are developing something, but they want to take it to a whole other level on their own. And, you know, you develop the unbridled retreats. It's your own thing. You've been marketing yourself. This hasn't been easy. Like you're so focused on what you want to do though, that there's no stopping you. So can we talk through a few of the steps that you've taken to start, you know, the business part of this and, you know, you've got a stunning website, like that doesn't do it by itself. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm very passionate about the business side because I, I was very clear. I wanted that independence of having my own business. And it started with my training program. The woman who taught me is a very successful serial entrepreneur, as well as a horsewoman, a coach, a psychotherapist who'd created this program. So she has a phenomenal program that has grown exponentially but I had a fabulous mentor. And for women looking to start their own business, and especially in a unique niche area like this, 
I can't say enough about finding a mentor or somebody who's out there doing something even similar, whether it's therapy dogs, and maybe you find somebody that's doing that or has their own successful Reiki practice or yoga, find somebody who's out there doing something like your niche or similar and learn, learn, learn everything you can. So number one would be having a mentor. So you don't have to figure it all out by yourself. Melissa Pierce, who was my mentor in this, had an incredibly successful business helping people through horses. She was also masterful at sales. And to be in business, as you know, and many women listening, sales is something that doesn't come naturally, uh, but that can be learned. So I really drew on my real estate skills. Allie, meeting with you in our VIP day, you being another mentor and really encouraging me to lean into my sales and to pitch some of these other high-end resorts. That was, it was a big stretch, but having mentorship really helped other female leaders. Another would be, (laughs) I've made a lot of, I don't call it sacrifices at all, but I was living a really nice life in Denver selling real estate, but to get into this business with horses, I knew I had to really shift my lifestyle. And I moved to a ranch about an hour outside of Denver, left my place in Denver and moved into kind of this funky little living space next to an indoor arena where I could work with horses. It wasn't fancy. It wasn't nice. I (laughs) at one point was keeping my clothes in a horse trailer, but I made adjustments in my lifestyle and it was worth it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of don't want to let go of the reins of change. But for me, I I was really hungry to make it happen. So sometimes you have to shift your lifestyle a little bit temporarily to really go for your dream. I I love that you shared that because there is this illusion that, you know, it's like you're reaching for the new thing. You're like, well, I don't want to give up this over here. And, you know, maybe you don't have to, but maybe you do just for a while or giving yourself that permission then is what then releases the energy for the magic to happen. Just be open. And I think that something I'm hearing in all of this is you were always open. You were always open to, okay, this could look different than I thought it would look, but at least I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Like this is the dream. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It was the openness, the willingness And I was so hungry to get out of real estate. I'll be really honest. I just was so driven. And a part of me was I wanted to prove it to myself and others. There was a lot of people that didn't believe in me and said, oh, you should keep your real estate license in case this doesn't work out. Every time somebody said that to me, I just literally pushed even harder and just said, oh, really? Watch me. (laughs) I just kept going. And I... There have been times, yeah, I've wanted to throw down my toys and quit. It was easier to be in real estate in a lot of ways, but it was not as fulfilling. And for those people out there that have a dream, even if it doesn't look like other people's dreams, when you get on the path of it, doors are going to open up. Opportunities are going to come your way. I literally met a woman. We were riding horses. I didn't know her, but we crossed trails riding our horses, crossed trails about eight years ago. And when you see somebody on a horse on a trail and you're riding by yourself, you wave them down. You want to catch up and talk. You have an instant connection. You love horses, but we really hit it off. And she ended up, she was the one who let me move to her ranch. She loved what I was up to my mission and wanting to help people. She said, Devin, I've got eight horses and a ranch. If you want to come down, you can, you know, Do your business here to get started. And Allie, this woman ended up building an indoor arena for me to work out of. And that's a, it's a huge structure where you can have horses inside and work with horses in all seasons. I mean, it was like I crossed trails with my fairy godmother. I didn't have that much capital to start, but to prove the point that if you stay true to the path that your intuition is calling you, I mean, you are going to meet people you never would have thought that can help support you in um, making your dream happen. So it's not linear at all, but it it's so worth it. You followed the magic. Happen. Followed the magic. I love that. You followed yes. the magic, the magic you felt when you were first with the horses 
you know, and everyone else is writing them and working them and you are just with them. And that's, you've always just kind of followed that magic. And now you're running retreats in Dominican Republic and Hawaii. And I mean, you're really a category of, of one nearly in what you do and exactly how you do it and these specific retreats and, and how willing you are to travel as well. Yeah, I am. <laughs> And that's a good thing. And it's also a unique thing. There's not a lot of competition, but there's not a lot of people to collaborate with that are doing the same thing as I am. So I've learned to really collaborate with people in other industries. And that's been wonderful. They have an outside perspective. But yeah, I love to travel. I love to stay at nice places. And I wanted that to be the business model of retreats. So It was meeting with you at our VIP day a year ago where you just set the bar even higher. You said, Devin, you got Canyon Ranch, you know, keep going. What other places at other resorts have horses out there? And I'll never forget. You told me the cowgirl image is cute. That's what you started with. (laughs) But I really want you to step into business owner and real leader of unbridled retreats. Uh And that was so helpful, Allie. I stopped all the cute (laughs) yeehaws. What did your homepage say? It says something like, howdy. Howdy. We we want some of that. We want some of that. But I think it was also, yeah, I I forgot now. It was was also also about you just internally owning that, (gasps) you know, you are this world-renowned retreat leader and what you did. And don't lose the cowgirl. We still love it. There's still plenty of cowgirl on you, there is a way on, your, on your wearing, site. I'm wearing a really nice blouse right now. And then I've got dirty cowgirl boots on with dirt <laughs> on them. So it, it is a part of me. And I also really stepped into owning the businesswoman in me, which has helped me land a lot of these resorts. And you were a big part of that. Oh, thank you. I'm going to pay you to do PR for me. This is fantastic. I appreciate it. When we're looking ahead at the months ahead, you know, right now we're recording this right now in April in the middle of all the, you know, craziness, which we shall not even mention, but looking forward now to like later in the summer and fall, what retreats do you have planned that you'd like people to know about? Yeah, thank you. The next unbridled retreat, fingers crossed, um, we're going to be open for that is July and that's in Montana. That is the only unbridled retreat that is for intermediate to experienced horseback riders. So all the retreats offer horseback riding and equine gestalt coaching, which is working on the ground with horses. July is an incredible ranch, but you got to know how to ride on that one. After that one, I will be in Colorado, my home base at a beautiful ranch too, actually back to back. Sylvandale Ranch, the end of August, right outside of Loveland, and then Devil's Thumb Ranch, which is a gorgeous ranch with an incredible spa for the ladies that want to get dirty with horses and connect to their heart and intuition and then go have a phenomenal massage. Devil's Thumb is a great one in September. And then I'll be in California later in September. And that's another new ranch for me called Alisol. So yeah, fall's really picking up. And next year, Allie, 2021, I'll be in Hawaii at the Four Seasons. So that is very exciting. So stay tuned. I'm I'm adding that one quickly here. That's awesome. Let me know if you need a uh, business coach on site for that one. You got it. (laughs) Give me a good excuse. I think we're all going to go travel berserk when this thing's all over. It was just going (laughs) to, I told Brett, I'm like, as soon as we get the green light, like that we know hotels and pools are open at least, like we're just going to get in the Land Rover and just drive away. (laughs) And we may not come back for a while. So I think I think you're going to see everything we've been through, especially a lot of women are thinking what's next. And I think it's a great time for this and for what you provide, because I mean, even if they weren't thinking about it, they they have to now. They have to think about what do I want with the rest of my life? You know, there's been changes, maybe things that I was familiar with are disappearing, whether it's livelihood or family or just so many things changing you know, you help women tap into what's next for them and have the courage to go after it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to really adapt a new perspective, which we're all facing and to exactly move forward in confidence. So unbridledretreats.com is the website. And where else can they follow you? Where are you on social? Where are you active? Facebook, Unbridled Retreats on Facebook. And for those that want some entertainment, I have been doing Facebook Lives on my back porch with my horses and we call them horsey happy hour. So you can join (laughs) me for that, grab a cocktail, 
sit out virtually in my back pasture with my horses. So that's Facebook and then Instagram under Unbridled Retreats and a lot of pretty horse pictures and ranch pictures on there. Yeah, those always make me smile when I see those. And everybody, you have to go to her website to see this. There's this beautiful photo on the front of her sitting on the horse and kind of just laying down on it and just, you know, holding her horse. And it just, the first time I saw that just brought tears to my eyes because you can feel the love and connection that you have with these animals and what's possible. So everyone should go take a look at that. Devin, to wrap up, can you share three of your best pieces of advice for all the women listening, whether it's to do with, you know, your work with the horses and or who you've become in this whole process? Yes. Three tips. One would be find a mentor. I can't emphasize that enough. Find a mentor and don't just ask them for coffee and to pick their brain. Really invest in the services they're offering or book a consultation with them anything you can, because it'll save you so much from reinventing the wheel, especially if you're just getting started. Um, And it's a niche business specifically. So find a mentor would be one. Another one would be, I personally, I live by this. I'm an adventurous soul. (laughs) So to take many field trips for yourself and hard to do right now under some circumstances, but I take off Allie, at least half a day, once a week, and just get in the car and start driving. (laughs) Sometimes I end up north, west. I'm in Colorado. Sometimes I'll be up in the mountains and I'll try to go somewhere I've never been. And I'll play music really loud and just a change of scene. And it really helps me reset and get out of my head. And I come back just feeling more inspired and invigorated, but a mini Mm trip. Hmm. It really reinstalls that sense of adventure. And like a kid, you know, kids look, we looked forward to field trips when Mm -hmm. we were a kid. And sometimes at work, we're so much in the grind that we forget to step away and play and have adventure. And by doing that, even just an hour every other week to start, it really will help bring some inspiration back into your life and really give you just a fresh perspective. So a field trip, mini field trip, The other would be, don't be afraid to be original. When I was pitching to these five-star resorts that I wanted to hold retreats at, I mailed them um, a beautiful brochure I spent a lot of time with introducing the unbridled retreat, a personal letter, and a horseshoe. (laughs) I literally mailed a horseshoe and I overnighted it so it would end up right on the desk of the general manager of the different resorts. You know, it's old school to mail people things anymore. So I really encourage people to do things originally. It does stand out. So next time, maybe you think about sending an email. If you're promoting yourself or pitching yourself, think about another way to do it outside the box. Mm. Could Mm -hmm. you mail something? Could you even pick up the phone or... Don't be afraid to be original. It stands out and people will never forget that. Yeah, I love that. And no doubt that got attention because so few people go the extra mile these days. We think it's all online. And yes, a lot of our business is, but I'm still surprised how little mail I get. I mean, people just don't mail things anymore. So it is, you know, we we barely go to the business mailbox. You know, now that we don't get checks anymore in the mail, it's not that fun, right? So (laughs) you go like once a week, it's exciting. There's a package, someone send a letter, there's a card, you know. It's it's a great idea for everybody right now to you know, send a card, send a letter, whether it's personal or or business, but it, it does mean a lot to people right now, especially in the middle of all this weirdness right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It'll really help you stand out and uh, it's, it's meaningful. There's love behind it and real thought and intention. Mm, I love this. Devin, thank you so much. I hope to come to one of your retreats one day, or at least the spa portion of it. You got it, Allie. <laughs> We're all on the Yeah. <laughs> Check out unbridledretreats.com. And Devin, thanks. Have a great day. Thanks, Allie. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Glambition Radio. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you subscribe so you automatically get new shows every week. And I'd love if you left us a review. We are on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and other platforms. And I'd love to hear from you. Come join the conversation online. You'll mostly find me on Instagram, but also on Facebook, Twitter, and more. Just head to AllieBrown.com. You will find them all there. 
And you can also learn about upcoming opportunities to meet in person. Glambition Radio is the elevated conversation for women leaders, and I'm honored you've tuned in.